Hello, I'm Bonnie Hollis from Arclight Technologies. This video is part of a series of videos based on Matthew North's book, Data Mining for the Masses, published by Global Text Press, copyright 2012, and available for $39.99 US from Amazon.com. This video is made with permission from Matthew North. Rapid Miner is a text and data mining tool that regularly appears at the tops of surveys as a leading open source tool for these applications. It's available on the web at rapid-i.com. I have brief five to six minute videos on how to install Rapid Miner, run the online tutorials, and add extensions on my YouTube channel. Search YouTube for ArcLight, that's A-R-C-L-I-G-H-T technologies, and you'll find my videos. Each chapter in the Data Mining for the Masses book shows an example data mining process on a sample data set. This is chapter six, K-means clustering. The description in the book is um, quite good, so I'm going to read from it. I'm quoting from page 94. The K in K-means clustering stands for some number of groups or clusters. The aim of this data mining methodology is to look at each observation's individual attribute values and compare them to the means, in other words, the averages, of potential groups of other observations in order to find natural groups that are similar to one another. The K-means algorithm accomplishes this by sampling some set of observations in the data set, calculating the averages or means for each attribute for the observation in that sample, and then comparing the other attributes in the data set to the sample's means. The system does this repetitively in order to circle in on the best matches and then to formulate groups of observations which become the clusters. As the means calculated become more and more similar, clusters are formed. As each observation whose attribute values are most like the means of a cluster, it becomes a member of the cluster. Using this process, k-means clustering models can sometimes take a long time to run, especially if you indicate a large number of, quote, max runs, unquote, through the data, or if you seek for a large number of clusters, that is k, to build your k-means cluster model. Okay, so let's look at the example here. I've loaded in the Chapter 6 data set, and if you go to earlier versions of these videos, you can see where to find it on the web. So I have the data set for Chapter 6 in here, and let's just run through it and see what it looks like. So if we go out to this data set, we see that this is someone who is working in a company with an insurance policy and wants to figure out if there are programs that will help reduce the cost of insurance by providing health classes or seminars for people. And what they're looking at right now is the weight and cholesterol and then the gender of the individual. And in this uh, sample set, one means male and zero means female. All of these are numeric and they need to be for k-means clustering because you can only calculate a mean or an average of a uh, attribute which is numeric so you need to have that so this person has done a sample of pulled 547 random samples from this uh, data set where each one is the individual showing their weight from the last time they visited the doctor and cholesterol from the blood test and then their, their gender so this is what the data looks like when we load it in one of the things we want to know for k-means clustering is do we have any outliers? So this means that we have to ask the question, what is an outlier? So let's take a quick look and remember and refresh our statistics class. In a normal distribution, we see that 68%, um, that is 34 plus 0.1 plus 34.1, or 68.2%, of the data fall in the first standard deviation either side of the mean or the average here. And we see that another 13.6% fall in the first standard deviation above that group, and another 13.6% fall in another standard deviation below this group. So Matthew North for this book is saying we should be using two standard deviations as uh, what we use to determine outliers. Sometimes people use three standard deviations, but in this case we're going to use two. 
Um, the idea being here that if you add up all of these numbers, you will see that 95% of the data is accounted for within two standard deviations. So this can be our test for our set to see if 95% of our is to see if our data falls within this two standard deviation range. So let's go back and look at it. We can see that from the statistics here. First of all, we have the average or the mean for weight and the average for cholesterol. And then we have a standard deviation over here. So I put together a quick little spreadsheet which says for these examples, if the weight is 143.572 for the average and has a standard deviation of 30.837, and if the cholesterol has an average of 170.433 and a standard deviation of 39.147, then two standard deviations on the low side for each of these are shown over here. So we have to ask, do all of our weight data fall between 81 and 205? And when we look at the range of our data, we see that the lowest data is 95, which is above 81, and the highest data is 203, which is below 205. So all of our data fall in this range. So for weight, we can say that we don't have any outliers they all fall within two standard deviations. For cholesterol, the low side of two standard deviations is 92, and it's less than 102, so it's outside the range. That's good. And the high side for the se second standard deviation is 248, which is above 235. So once again, our cholesterol data fall within two standard deviations. Therefore, we feel comfortable with this data set that we don't have any outliers. This is important for k-means because you know that averages can be wildly affected by having outliers. So this is a good check to run on your data before you do k-means uh, clustering them. So now let's go ahead and actually do the clustering and see what it looks like. So I'm going to look for a new operator, and my new operator is going to be k-means, and you see I have to type it with the hyphen in there. And there are several k-means uh, operators here, but I'm going to use the simplest one, this k-means one. So I'm just going to drag it on here and make sure that it goes on the line and gets connected in there. This is how many clusters you want to have. Now, we could run a cluster with two, but that wouldn't be very interesting. The person running this has a sense that there's maybe four good clumps or clusters of data in this set. So we're going to say four is what we're going to use for a number of clusters. Notice that we could do a lot of max runs, but that affects your run time. For right now, we're just going to leave that at 10. So I'm going to, although Matthew Norris shows it this way, I'm going to add one more piece of output here. I want to have not just the um, cluster model, but I also want to take a look at the uh, clustered set. So I want to have both of those. So I'm going to go ahead and run it this way. Now, when I look at the cluster model here, what it says is you've got four clusters, and they range in size from one with 118 to one with 154 items. So we've split our 547 items into these four clusters. And they're relatively balanced, so that feels like we got a pretty good balance. But let's look about at this and let's learn a little bit more about this. Let's look at the centroid table. How the clusters are assigned, 0, 1, 2, and 3, uh, for the four different clusters, we assign the cluster name 0, cluster name 1, cluster name 4, and 3, uh, is arbitrary. So in this particular set, the smaller numbers are over here in cluster 3, but that doesn't always happen that way, so you can't assume that cluster 3 will always be less than cluster 2 and less than cluster 1. Sometimes it's, it happens the other way. So. You need to know that. It's just coincidental. But cluster three are people who have a weight uh, where the uh, it's clustering around a weight of 106, and the average cholesterol is about 119. And since we said that one was male and zero was female here, we see that there's probably more males than females in this group. In cluster two, these are people who weigh a little bit more and have a little bit higher cholesterol, and they're predominantly female because it's less than 0.5 and female is 0 and male is 1 in this. 
Cluster 1 is even more predominantly female with weights around 152 and cholesterol around 185. And then finally we have this group out here which is a weight of 184, cholesterol of 218, and it's more men than women but not exclusively so. If, if it were all men it would be 1, if it were all women it would be 0, so there's a mix in there. So the next thing that we can do is we can look at this in a little bit more data. So let's look at the folder view. Here we can see what are the individual examples that are in here. This is example number six. So the ID for this is six. It's a male who weighs 227, sorry, weighs 198 pounds and has a cholesterol of 227. And you could go through and you could examine all of these individuals in here. The other thing we can do, because I have that example set results shown and it shows which cluster everybody's in, is we could start to do a plot view on this. And in this one, I have a scatter plot where the uh, x-axis is set to weight, and the y-axis is set to cholesterol, and then the color column is set to um, cluster. We could set the color column to anything we wanted, genders. You could see uh, blue is female, and red is male, which is not what we usually see, but anyhow, you can sort of see how people are dispersed by gender throughout this group. But I think it's more interesting to look at the cluster that they're placed in, and you can sort of see these are the four clusters of people. The idea behind this is maybe these people up here who have high weight and cholesterol are at risk for some heart disease, um, kinds of uh, health concerns, and so maybe these would be good people to invite to a class on eating for lowering your cholesterol or something like that. That's the whole motivation behind this. Okay, the last thing we want to do for this example to complete this chapter is that we want to go back to the design perspective and we want to filter out just that group of people who are in that cluster with the highest weight in cholesterol. So I'm going to say filter examples. And you've seen this before where it's being used to work on data before we process it, but you can use it afterwards as well. So I'm putting it on here on this second output. So it's the uh, clustered set output that I'm going to go ahead and filter. And I'm not going to have all of them. I'm going to do an attribute value filter. So what I want to filter for are clusters. So C-L-U-S-T-E-R equals C-L-U-S-T-E-R under bar zero. Now this is one of those tricky moments in Rapid Miner where you're actually typing something in and not just choosing it from a drop-down menu. Be very careful that you type things in exactly. You'll see that I meant to type in equal, but I typed in an underbar. So let's replace that typographical error and see if this runs. But a word to the wise, when you're typing something in freehand like this, that it's a chance where you're more likely to make mistakes than other times. So if we go ahead and we look at this now, our example set has only 154 examples. And if we look at the metadata view of this, now the um, range here shows that these are all people who weigh at least 167 pounds and have a cholesterol of 204. So we have some statistically de derived parameters that we can go back and look at our whole employee database now and write a SQL selection that would choose for people who fit these parameters, at least 167 pounds and at least 204 cholesterol, and we could select all of those employees and send them an email inviting them to a class or uh, a seminar. So that would be how this would actually be implemented. Thank you for your attention, and I hope I see you in other videos.